So, um, so real quick again, so for a quick show of hands, how many folks in the room, this is the first time you've been to an OWASP meeting at all? All right, so look around the room, there's a lot of hands up, right? Well, that's actually good a testament that we continue to grow. With about 2,600 community members on the New York City chapter, and give or take 45,000 or so that we claim worldwide, there's a lot of people in this organization that are contributing to open source uh, and trying to spread the message relative to software security, right? So. For the, for the new folks in the room, this organization is continuing to grow, and, and certainly with your assistance. Something to consider, though, is that it's really all about volunteerism, right? I'm a volunteer, a lot of the other chapter leaders are volunteers, or I say all of them are volunteers. So anyone that would like to fix something or make an improvement, um, that's really where this energy comes from. Um, I've been doing it now since like 2004, um, so kind of old hat, but certainly if there's anything that we can do better, all you gotta do is step up and say, hey, I wanna own this, I, I wanna fix something that you're working on, uh, and make it better, feel free, do it. Uh, there's no wrong answers in any of the stuff that we're playing with. Um, also, from a community perspective, most of you probably gravitate to this group because of sort of the community focus and relative to some of the principles, right? This is not supposed to be an organization that focuses on, you know, bringing down demand and focusing on disruption technologies, right? Although we want to be disruptive in technologies that improve software security, the group as a whole uh, is really trying to collaborate and improve the organizations and the, the people in the space. Um, so a quick, uh, a quick identification of some of the leaders in the room. Um, tonight, uh, you know, please thank them for their time uh, volunteering. We will be going downstairs after this event for uh, the first drink on OWASP uh, at the Red Eye. So if anyone wants to grab a beer with us, we will be downstairs uh, after this event. For 2016, uh, we are focused on projects and programs. So again, if you'd like to participate in any of our upcoming projects that we're working on, the ones I mentioned before, uh, or any of our programs, meaning forming the concepts of what we'll be doing, uh, where we'll be having meetings and what we'll be speaking about, it's a great opportunity to, to literally raise your hand and jump in. So, um, so again, lots of, lots of goals for the chapter that some of the folks that, didn't, that raised their hand are not aware of, uh, but certainly we try to kind of grow this community with different aspects and for 2016 a lot more will happen. Uh, we also do a lot of investments, and when I say investments, I mean activities that we produce, uh, code and projects. Uh, Noreen actually just came across the river from NGIT, uh, one of our members, Evan Hernandez, who's the project leader for the virtual village I mentioned before, which is a virtual environment that will be online shortly. Uh, he was over at NGIT to um, uh, recruit uh, students from NGITs in their capstone program to work on the project. Uh, maybe Noreen will touch on that later. Uh, but again, a lot of different opportunities that are, that are popping up, uh, and certainly projects is another key important thing for this chapter. We have a lot of folks in this chapter that are involved in projects. Uh, either start their projects here or they're a part of a project somewhere around the world. Uh, and again, today we have Claudia here who speaks to that uh, and she'll present on some material relative to what she functions, functionally does in OWASP. Uh, but again, we want to align with folks that are working on OWASP projects. Why? Because with $43,000 uh, in the bank for the OWASP chapter, we want to make sure that these people in these projects are properly funded and have what they need to be successful. So if you start a project, you can tap into that resource. But more importantly, it's important to understand sort of that the chapter is with all projects that are associated here. So your home or your home chapter is really important. Uh, if you would like to do a presentation in the near future, some of you can't see the fine print. But if it has software, we probably want to talk about it. Uh, if it's physical lock picking, that might be cool. But this is not that sort of club. We want to focus on software security. Um, so please uh, sort of submit the talks that are there. Uh, we also have a lot of cool questions that pop up from people in the audience such as, hey, I'm looking for ABC widget, uh, who should we talk to? I always start off by saying you should look at the OS website and look to uh, some of the organizations that are corporate supporters of the organization, both globally and certainly locally. These are the organizations that you know, spend a lot of time to help this community that you are now participating into. Uh, upcoming events, this is critical, right? There's a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, some of these are um, right around the corner, such as AppSec USA. Uh, that's our big event. Uh, if you're headed out to San Francisco, maybe by show of hands. Anyone going out there? One, two, three, four, five, five, six. Got a, lot, got a bunch of folks. Uh, so that's sort of like the big mecca event for OWASP. Uh, 220 chapters around the world. Uh, people sort of show up in one location every year. About 2,500 people are going to be out at AppSync, which will probably be an interesting time. Uh, we also have a Joint Cybersecurity Awareness Month coming up in October. So we're working with, it. We're working with all the professional associations, ISC Squared, ISACA, HTCIA, um, ISE Squared, all the professional associations here in the city uh, are doing one big event on, on October 13th for Cybersecurity Month. Um, take a look at the website for more details. Uh, IEEE was just announced. We're doing an event with IEEE uh, in the, on the Jersey side, focused on mobile security. 
Um, and for those who don't know well who IEEE is, uh, it's a good standards group that is quite large, uh, considering OWASP size, uh, and I think it's a really good relationship to sort of build on. And lastly, as I mentioned earlier, the last two meetings for the, uh, for the year in New Jersey will be Mandelbaum Salzburg, lots of focused topics relative to some, to some of the legal aspects of software and software security. And if you have any issues you want to bring up, a uh, really good opportunity to do that. And lastly, December 7th is at Goldman Sachs. Uh, we're planning a sort of a Shark Tank event where people that are doing innovation and software development that want to pitch their company and look for funding and talk to angels and VCs, this will be the event to do that at. So please talk to me or Don uh, if you're interested. Again, AppSec USA, lots of chapters. You can help out in many different areas. And again, back to our agenda. So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Claudia, uh, who's new to our team at OWASP, to talk a little bit about uh, her function and how she can plug into the organization. Uh, so I've been here for three months. I'm a project coordinator for the Project Task Force and the OWASP Foundation. So I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the project uh, project review process. Oh, I need, I'm not going to need um, okay. So kind of the agenda, how to start a project. I know a lot of questions are coming up on this. Um, I see it on email. So I wanted to kind of go through the start, start a project. The project task force recent <coughs> activities. Some recent events and initiatives that we've done. Um, and some events that are coming soon. So to start with, uh, I would like to start to talk about a how to start a project. So everything is on the wiki, but I wanted to highlight this. Once you decide that you want to start a project, you have to have a um, clear mission statement, uh, cr create a clear roadmap, of course, and choose a license. So once you have all that and uh, all your thoughts and all your roadmaps together, and you're looking for contributors at this point, um, so now you're ready to start your project. So we move along to starting the project. So you're going to need some information. You're going to need the project name, the project purpose, and everything is on the wiki. Um, I'll show you exactly where. So everything is here on this uh, wiki. So you can start your project. It, it gives you the licenses. Uh, it gives you the information on how to how to get contributors, how to promote your project, all the information um, on how to create and, and a successful project. So in order for you to do this, you submit all the information. That comes to me uh, through Salesforce. Once that all your information is gathered, all your um, repository, which a repository is very important to the project because that way we can look at and see what, what's in there. Are you doing code? Is there some type of code that we can look at? I know it's preliminary. I know it's only going to be a one page or a couple of lines um, for the tools as well. For documentation, it would be a clear co content of um, a table of contents to make sure that everything is there. Um, so at least the idea is there. Um, so any questions to this point? Does anybody have any questions? You do this for the entire world, correct? Yes, for everybody that wants to start a project. So it's not that we're selective. We just want to make sure that these projects are complete once they hit our database, and once they um, they have a you know good good repository, at least something is started. Um, I do send back some some requests asking for more information. Please give me more detail. Give me more You know, your repository seems empty. Can you please give me some more information? So I do go back and forth with the project leader. So I wanted to show you what it looks like. Um, so this is basically the workflow that um, we have currently and that it, I haven't changed anything. I'm just following what um, has been done before. I'm just trying to create a better platform for you. Um, so as far as a strong po project proposal comes in. Uh, we g I gather all the information, the data that's there. I submit the proposal to the project task force. They will, you know, look it over, look over the all the criteria that I give them. I create the uh, wiki page for you. Uh, so everything I go back back to you and say, okay, your project has been accepted. 
you now get a wiki page and these are the extra instructions that you would need to complete your project or to start working on your project. So the, the uh, project task force is also available for any questions that you have. Um, if you're having some trouble, maybe we can, you know, we can find somebody that can contribute to your project as far as giving you um, some information or a couple of links or a couple of fixes that they know from experience that work. Um, so let's see here. So this is the form that you fill out. I just wanted to, so you get used to seeing it. Um, so it's really pretty basic but important and there's a lot of critical information that does need to be filled out. So any questions up to this point? Okay, so once, once we have all the information, you get a wiki page, you start working on your project, you could come back to me and say, Claudia, look, you know, I'm having trouble on this. I'm always you know, there to help you. I'm here to help you um, be successful in your project, whatever it is. If you're working on an initiative or you're gathering a group of people to just do a, a go to meeting, um, kind of thing. I can help you facilitate that, do a couple of slides for you. Whatever you need, I'm here to help. So basically, you know, um, I don't know how it was done before because I know that they ha didn't have anyone in this position for a while. So, but I'm, o I'm an open person and I, I want to help as much as I can, basically. So, to that part. So this is, this is basically our, what our activity has been so far at the Project Task Force. We had uh, two projects at it uh, last month, and then we had uh, one recent um, graduation from a, a incubator to a lab, which is the bench, uh, benchmark uh, tool project. And then we had some documentation that graduated from incubator to lab, and also some code. So there's a lot of activity, and there's a lot of uh, successful um, projects that are in, uh, currently in the inventory list. And I wanted to add that we also did a couple initiatives and actually Fabio Cirillo is here. He did the um, Summer of Code Sprint 2015. We gathered, uh, they worked, well, they just finished up and wrapped up the whole Summer Code, Summer of Code. And um, we had, originally we had 39 proposals we selected eight out of those proposals for each of these projects. Um, it was a very hard decision because um, we had really good projects um, proposals coming in from the students. So I'm very excited to say that um, all the students passed the final evaluations. They did an amazing work. They were very dedicated all summer. And definitely we gained a lot of improvements on the projects. Each project gained something from the students actually volunteering to uh, work on, on um, the, the project codes and were very successful. A lot of, um, a lot of good contributions came out of this uh, initiative. So we're excited to say we even gained a couple of contributors to each project. So that's, you know, that's a really good thing. Um, any questions on this? I have a question. Yes. How many, act how many products do we consider now active as of this month? As of this month? I mean, in general, if we have 100, 200, 500, what's the number that we Right have? now, we have 100 active, 100 active projects, <laughs> right now. But we're working on um, getting more activity. Uh, hopefully, by October, we're doing a big um, review. We're going to do a whole review process. So it's kind of going to, going to, I think it's going to keep those, get those uh, projects that are dormant kind of jump up and say, you know what, I want to I want to get into it because I'm going to start looking at their projects at their repositories, emailing them, saying, you know, you haven't worked on this, are you still working on this? Probably to throw it back out to the community and say, you know, these projects are abandoned, they look good, you want to jump in and take the lead on this? And I've had a couple of people already do that. So, we're trying our we're trying to get these good projects active. It definitely is one of the goals that we have. And then we have the project summit that's coming in uh, next week, the 22nd and 23rd. These are the projects that are gonna be um, participating. So if you're going, please stop by. 
it's free. We're looking for some feedback, some discussion. Um, definitely, we're definitely interested in that. Uh, these projects are very good projects. They're all all labs except for the WAFC FEC. It's a still actually Tony is starting the activity back up, so we're very excited about that. He gained a couple of uh, volunteers already. And then coming soon, we have that kickoff incubator project review. We're going to start, you know, hitting those projects that have been dormant for a while and also reviewing for projects that are, could become labs um, and so forth. So then we have a couple of project summits. Not all, um, but these are some of the things we might, uh, might be able to get some um, activity going on. And then I gave you some resources, uh, some couple of links that are easy to find. I know that the wiki is sometimes confusing and a lot of information is compacted there. I'm working on that. I'm working on a better platform for you to just go in and start your project and get it done. Because I know you have to click here, click there, click there. Um, but I'm working on it. So just so you know, our team is working on that to make it an easier platform. And that's what I have so far. So if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Yes. Is it similar to the Apache Foundation systems? You go <laughs> some open source, it's the same thing, or, or you have different? So, so we definitely tried to model ourselves after other successful organizations like Apache. Um, but there are some subtle differences, of course. And that's ever evolving. And that's one of the areas that Cody is focused on, trying to make it better for everybody. Yeah, so the, the better, I'm working on the better platform because I know that there's a lot of complaints about that. Um, a lot of, you know, I can't find this or I can't find the funding page. I can't find uh, the explanation of the project handbook, the guidelines, the spending guidelines. So we're trying to definitely work on getting better. Yes? My easiest way is to put like this, like uh, in the back end, some solar, some search engine, in the front end to put some like UI, yeah, we're definitely we're we're doing some something similar. I don't I'm not too technical, so but we're using Salesforce and we're using a portal. So that's what we're trying to bring in to use a portal. We'll still use the wiki um, because that's where it'll be. But now we'll now have a portal instead. That's what we're working towards. That's our goal. So one of the things we done we, one of the things we budgeted for in uh, for 2015, which nobody's claimed the bounty on yet. Uh, is there's a five thousand dollar number which has been put out there back in January that if you start okay, start a new OWASP product in 2015 you qualify for a thousand dollars up to five thousand. So we wanted to see five new products come out of New York. Uh, we haven't seen five new products come out of New York or existing projects. Uh, but if you'd like to sort of capture some of that or, or kind of claim some of those bounties, there's still a few months left to uh, you know, do a little code sprint. So consider what Claudia is talking about. Take a look at what's on the website and actively get involved in the chapter. And then obviously at every meeting, we'd love to have a status update on your project to give us some more content to talk about, and also to get people to collaborate within the chapter. So, you know, money money's one of those uh, elephant in the room conversations, but you know, if you have some spare time, want to help the mission of software security, and want to get some money to pay for some beers, um, it's, it's available. <laughs> but I also, if anyone's working on a project, if you could let me know. Yeah, so Dawn, can, Dawn's the point of contact so we can track all this stuff. So we can kind of see who's working on what, group or a chapter and also like Tom just said that you talked about it at the chapter meeting. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, what are like the restrictions that have those folks in meetings? Is there there's some guidelines there that you um pretty much um Yeah so the fact of sorry so the foundation as a as an organization provides a platform and we have um, uh, resources an example like marketing and graphics and some uh, some baked in services that are available sort of across the organization. But when you talk about, you know, how do I qualify to get a thousand dollars in what I mentioned, it's simple. It's start a project and be able to have that to sort of kick it off and you can figure out how to use those funds. Um, some people have in the past used funds to drive, uh, you know, near shore, offshore development, to go ahead and do a, a coding syllabus, have rented out a room in a hotel, got a few of their buddies together and bought a bunch of beer and, work and rocked it all weekend. Whatever you feel is going to be produce a viable project that's going to help software security. Again, document, best practices guide, a piece of compiled code, improving something that's already that's been identified as dormant. There's lots of ways to engage. So come see me and we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. 
Okay, well, that's all I have, folks, and um, thank you very much for inviting me. So me, thank you. I'm the community manager for the Global Foundation. I basically have a lot of um, responsibilities with the organization. One of the primary responsibilities is just making sure that chapters have access to the resources that they need, that they are doing um, lots of wonderful things like we see happening here in New York City. Uh, we're always using New York as a model. There's a lot of really great things that come out of here. Um, I also do communications, so I have a monthly newsletter that goes out to the OWASP leaders and OWASP community uh, newsletter, I'm sorry, mailing list. So if you are not a leader, you can join, um, you can actually join the OWASP community uh, mailing list on the website in order to get access to that. Um, I will onboard new uh, chapters. We, I'm in the middle of an audit right now and we're actually closer to 250 chapters. Um, I just onboarded about 27 since the beginning of this year, something like 51 new leaders uh, worldwide. Um, so if you're a leader or if you're a uh, member, you have um, access to things like a OWASP email account and all of the Google tools that go along with that. Um, and I can help you set up with that. So if you're a member and you don't have access to that, you should let me know and I can get you set up. Um, I also keep my eye out for a lot of really cool things that are happening around the world that different chapters are doing. Some chapters are very focused on projects um, where that's what they will do. They will pick a project and that's you know, all they'll do. They'll meet, they'll work on the project, or they won't meet, but they'll work on the project. Some of them get present presentations in uh, talk, to talk about the, the topics in application security that are really important in their area. There are chapters that are in very um, you know, developing type countries that don't have a very strong infrastructure and a lot of what they're doing is teaching their communities, law enforcement, um, and you know, to get them to uh, adopt some of the uh, guidelines that OWASP has been you know, trying to get everybody around the world to, to do. Um, I'm gonna take a look at my notes again so I don't forget anything. Uh, as far as communication, one of the things that I can do specifically for um, New York City is uh, we have a Twitter account, Facebook accounts, LinkedIn. So anytime there is a project that is announcing something or an event that you would like to have me set up a communication schedule for, I can make sure that you get your messages um, out to the larger community. If you need volunteers, if you need, um, you know, if you need resources. Um, I, that's like a major part of what I do. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, there are a lot of tools that the organization has um, gotten access to for use um, by projects and by the chapters, things like uh, Slack accounts um, and Trello, uh, trying to get people to use um, those types of tools to communicate. Um, is really interesting and I also found out recently that you can actually use uh, Slack to create a Gantt chart for projects which is something that I hadn't realized before it's something that Evan told me today that I'm really wanting to experiment with to see how we can use that to really get um, projects you know organized so that they can know what their next steps are um, Another really big part of my job is we're a foundation and that means that we handle money um, and we have a lot of chapters around the world that either don't have money and are interested in figuring out how they can pay for their events, how can they get you know, pizza to be delivered, how can they get you know, the, the resources that they need for projects that they're developing. Uh, New York City doesn't seem to have that problem. They, uh, I mean, I think it's also a factor of just being in New York City where there are a lot of, um, a lot of people for one and also a lot of companies because we will, we will allow companies to allocate a portion of their corporate membership to a specific project or a specific chapter. So that's one of the reasons that um, New York can and, and larger communities like New York can um, have a lot of uh, funding. Um, and also things like the AppSec USA from 2013, which actually brought in a, a large amount of funds. <clears throat> it's become a lot of work. Uh, it is a lot of work. I'm actually on the startup team for the AppSec EU um, conference, and I've just started working with them on their uh, communication schedule for you know the, the types of messaging that's going to go out. Um, AppSec, um, sorry, the OWASP Eastern European Conference has also asked me to um, put together some 
a schedule for getting their communications out. So you're going to start to hear about that particular event when you're in or you know listening to what's going on in um, AppSec USA. So I'm going to be at AppSec USA. I'm running a series of chapter leader workshops where we're going to talk about funding. We're going to talk about how to get um, different um, you know ideas for engaging. Uh, the group, how to actually share ideas with other chapters and other projects so that what's working somewhere might actually be something that another chapter would be interested in doing. And just a few examples of some of those things that um, I've seen. Uh, there are uh, organizations, um, there's the Cluj chapter in Eastern Europe who's actually been involved with government um, and actually produced a application security kind of PSA, public service. Um, program for the general public to understand the issues behind application security and behind having strong passwords. Um, and that's actually a, kind of an introduction of your community um, and, and the need for these types of, um, these types of uh, products, projects that we're working on. Um, and we also see that happening a lot in uh, developing countries, places in India. Uh, where they also may not have the infrastructure that we have here and really need to be trained. Um, people going into K-12 schools to teach children about it and hoping that they go and talk to their parents about it. Um, also um, connecting with universities and um, educational programs to get the students really interested in um, where they they can go as a career with this. And uh, that's one of the things that I was doing in New Jersey today, which is the uh, New Jersey chap the Northern New Jersey chapter serves, and has, I guess the past three years, served as a mentor for their capstone project at the New Jersey T um, Institute of Technology, where they will get um, three or four students on a project, and it's an official OWASP project, um, and help to develop it from the ground up. And it's a great way for, um, for you to get involved with the students and you know um, as a mentor and it's also obviously a great way for them to learn about what what we are doing and maybe they'll make it a career um, so I guess that's a lot um, does anybody have any questions about um, about community management at OASP and um, I hope I see you all in San Francisco we're coming <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. And obviously, since we're uh, in the five boroughs here, uh, if anyone uh, is interested in starting a chapter in uh, the Bronx or Staten Island and things like that, uh, we always encourage it. Uh, we recently started a chapter in Brooklyn. Um, so the goal is, is that, you know, OWASP is a good community to grow with, and certainly your local folks are the core ones. So feel free to start up, you know, Central Jersey, you know, different parts of the world. That's what it's all about, and when you travel, uh, do that as well.